I've just come back. I need the rounds. So instead of looking for the knockout, I decided to just showcase my talent and show how I could do 10 rounds. My goal the whole time was to take her out in the 10th round. I said, I'm going to stay composed. And in the 10th, I'm going to show them what I'm going to do in my next fight in the first round. Hi, everyone. I'm Sasha from Women's Fight News. And I'm joined by IBO Bantamweight World Champion, Melissa Parker. Melissa, how are you doing? I'm doing really good. How are you? I'm good, thank you. It's very hot in the UK at the minute. I'm not used to it. Um, <laughs> but apart from that, I'm doing quite well. <laughs> Texas can make mine on its weather. It's been raining for three days. Then we get like one day of nice heat, then back to muggy weather. <laughs> <laughs> um, I want to talk about your last fight because obviously you had an amazing fight, a great performance, and you're now world champion. So how does that feel? It feels really good. I'm well aware that the IBO is a starter belt. And that was the point of it because, you know, I did just recently turn pro. I'm still under a year as a pro, but I wanted to show why I should be on the fast track. So the IBO was a way to open that door to get me on that level. Yeah. How did you, uh, well, I'm sure you've had time to reflect now. So how did you feel on your performance that night? I felt great. I could have done a lot more, but I felt I trained so hard. And because I've just come back, I need the rounds. So instead of looking for the knockout, I decided to just showcase my talent and show how I could do 10 rounds. My goal the whole time was to take her out in the 10th round. I said, I'm going to stay composed. And in the 10th, I'm going to show them what I'm going to do in my next fight in the first round. Because she wasn't supposed to be my opponent. I didn't train for her. So why would I give away all the tools in my arsenal for someone that's just a sparring session for me? Yeah, that's so true. When, when did the change of opponent happen? So we had known that she was trying to get out of the, the fight almost over a month before the fight was supposed to happen. So Kalista knew well ahead of time to stand by because she would be um, an opponent for me. So even though she was a last minute opponent, she wasn't like really a last minute opponent because she had time to train. So a month out, Rosalina was getting out, found the way out. So three weeks out, we were able to basically lock in Kalista, but we weren't able to talk about it. Right. OK. Yeah. And like you say, it wasn't a last minute as opponent as such because she was obviously able to train as well. So, but yeah, is that difficult for you? So, you know, because you're going against someone like me, I'm not someone you take last minute. Um, I'm a very dangerous fighter as far as my skill level, my power. So I can see on the other side why so many women wouldn't want to be my last minute opponent because, you know, Rosalinda found a way out the fight. Yeah, 100%. I mean, so you've just said people won't want to be your last minute opponent, which is so true. But it seems like people just don't want to be your opponent full stop. Like you could give them a 12 month training camp and they're still going to come up with an excuse. Like what's going on? Yeah, I feel like I could take a time machine to the past and tell them, get ready for me, and then come back and they still won't fight. <laughs> it just seems, I thought that right now would be the time you want to fight me. I'm making the most mistakes and I have the most rust to shake off. So if you don't fight me now, I'm eventually going to be in a position of being mandatory. But what's so frustrating about the pros is my understanding is once you're a champion, you have less choices. It means I'm ready for whoever. So if you're a top dog, you should have to fight one another. That doesn't seem to be the case. It's, it's a game of which belt is open. Let me get a vacant belt so I can hand pick my opponent and not fight the other champions. So we have world champions fighting champions all over the place. It's, it's kind of crazy to me. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's the thing with boxing, I think, in general. Like, there's so many different federations. There's so many different belts. And then, like you say, a lot of people fight for vacant belts and then they'll move divisions and fight for another vacant belt. That seems to be a common theme as well going on in boxing. Yeah, like Mikado, she couldn't fight me a while ago, but now she's fighting Serrano in a different weight class. You're not even defending your belt. So now we have all these belts tied up because everyone's jumping all over the place. And it makes it hard to know who really is the best at that division. I believe in going in division, sweeping it up, having a couple defenses. You don't have to go undisputed. You don't have to go even unified, but at least have a defense or two at that weight to show who you are at that weight class. 
Yes, definitely. I've seen, yeah, how many times do you see it where someone's got a title? Like you say, they'll just move, you know, they don't want to fight who's mandatory or whatever, and they'll just move to a different um, different division. You think, how does that make sense? It doesn't, like Bermudez. I tried to get a fight with her, got denied, and then she fights Sedano, and it's not even for her belt. And I'm like, what the heck is going yeah. on? Yeah, it's so crazy. So you put a tweet out today, didn't you, saying like none of the top fighters will, will fight you? Like, let me tell you, my team behind the scenes has been so crazy. I try to stay quiet about that because I believe that we are professionals. So you want to be careful that you're not complaining too much or just sounding sour. But what goes on behind the scenes has me mind blown. Just the way women either want to get paid a lot to lose. You want to get paid to lose or you don't want to fight and you want to hand pick your opponent or you want to wait for a vacant belt. So I've had up and comings from Amanda Gale, the Canadian, to current world champions like Luna and Bermudez and now even Mercado, who, because they're going to get paid money, they won't fight me, but they'll fight Serrano. So I guess big money talks. Yeah, which is a shame, isn't it? Because for me as an athlete, would you not want to increase your legacy rather than just the pay it can't all just I know pay is important you need to pay but all of that but it should be about the legacy and you wanting to go out and and achieve everything that you can whereas I think some people sell out quite quickly yeah it should be a combination because you're still a prize fighter so you want to get yeah. paid but you also have to put yourself in a position to get that kind of money I'm well aware that I'm not in a position to be making several hundred thousand dollars but should I be making decent money because I'm a champion and I've shown I could go 10 rounds? Most definitely. A lot of fighters, they want to make big money like Taylor money. Taylor's not handpicking her opponent. She's fighting who's available. You know, I'm not, I don't agree with Han, but Han is a mandatory. So she's going to fight her and show why she's such a great champion. Situations like that make sense. What doesn't make sense is when you fight someone after a long layoff. When you fight someone who just had a child, when you fight someone in a different weight class, that's the part where I'm like, I'm trying to scratch my head. Like, why did I, why did I come into pro boxing for again? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a shame, isn't it? Because then you're just not getting the fights, are you? Like, as a fighter, you want, I mean, I, in an ideal world, how often would you like to be out each year? How many times would I like to fight? Yeah. I think three or four times is reasonable in one year. We have 12 months and I recover really quick. So that's the reason I like to stay active. There's nothing against people who want to go slower, especially once you are a world champion, but you should have something locked in and we should have an idea of your game plan. You can't just go radio silent once you're a champion. Like Dina Dorslin, I just found out she decided to stay at 118. So now I'm a little perked up like, hey, how are you doing? Let me introduce myself. Yes. <laughs> so we'll see if maybe we can go at it because everyone else at 118 has mandatories and are tied up and for some reason just can't fight me. My promoter reached out to them, has offered them decent money, but there's always one excuse or another. I'm starting to feel like Jessica McCaskill yeah because she's having a tough time also getting some fights mm -hmm. and yeah it's people just being like protected I think happens a lot I think if you look at I mean if we look at like the Shannon Courtney situation and fight camp and that was another fight that you know she is now a world champion so she should be having to put herself out there having to fight some you know the best of the best in that division and again it's like opponents are always cherry pick. It seems that way, especially now at 118, because I could fight anywhere from 115 to 126. That's where I'm most comfortable. Once I go into 130, now I have to put the time in to put on the weight properly and make adjustments. So I thought that going into the lower ones, everybody wanted to fight. So I jump in the mix and I'm like, OK, great. I'm going to be able to fight all these world champions, you know, one by one once I pick up a belt. So boom, I pick up the IBO. I get what they say with the IBO, but it's a start. Who wants to fight me? I'm still getting the night as oh, IBO champion. But now I, they're fighting people in other weight classes matching up against each other. So now I'm in a position where it's like, do I change weight classes so I can fight? Or do I just stay in this weight class and be more patient? And that's why I sent my tweet today because 
if I can't do things that way, I don't really have an interest in fighting. I'm getting asked to be put on smaller cards now. I didn't become world champion to go backwards. I became world champion to go forward and face other girls on my level, not just fight tomato cans and give people a great knockout reel. Yeah, that's so true though, isn't it? So you're world champion now, like you've earned that right to be on big shows, to be on big platforms. So just because fighters don't want to fight you, you shouldn't have to suffer for that. Yeah, I think that's where promoters and managers need to step in more, especially the sanctioning bodies. If you're charging us money for our belts, why aren't you becoming more involved and becoming more strict and letting it be known in how things need to run so that it's more fluid? And then it forces champions to fight champions and up and comings to fight each other. Now we're going to have a flow of steady fighters fighting each other. Everything's getting tied up now because they charge us for a belt, but then they don't step in when they want to switch and bring someone else in from a different weight class. Or for instance, Courtney, who's fighting uh, Mitchell, who turned down fighting me. It's, it is what it is, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's the problem with boxing. It's such a complicated business. There's just so many people involved. How important is it to have like the right like managers on your side to to help your career? It's really important, especially as a female boxer, because women's pro boxing is so new as far as its popularity and being shown to the world. So right now we have a bunch of belts that are now becoming filled up it becomes harder to get those fights. So when you have a manager or promoter, they're the ones who are supposed to speak for you, supposed to negotiate. But the problem is, is I had tweeted right before our interview that I don't believe promoters should be allowed exclusive contracts because they'll turn down fights. So you only fight on their card. And that's something I've been dealing with is I've now have done business with two promoters who they don't care about moving you along. They care about making money on their cards. So if they can't put you on that card, they're going to hold up your career because you're not going on anyone else's card. Mm, yeah. And again, that, like you say, it's holding you back for just someone else's financial gain. So when you're in that situation, how do you find yourself being able to get out of the situation and sign with someone else? It's quite a good legal team. <laughs> <laughs> That's the position I'm in now where I signed, you know, with a promotion that I thought had my best interests at heart. And I come to find out that we don't um, at all. You know, one thing is said on camera, but behind camera, it's just a completely different story where you get cursed out, you get legally threatened, you're told what you are and aren't going to do. I wasn't even allowed to know who my replacement opponent was just because the promoter felt like I don't have a right to know. He wants to do things his way. So now I'm in a situation where I have no idea what's going on with my career. No one's telling me anything. You know, I had to hire a lawyer to try to get out of this contract now because he let me know, I'll destroy you. You don't do what I want. I'll just destroy you. So I need all these fighters who are now going through the Olympics and about to turn pro to understand <laughs> They're going to tell you everything you want to hear. My problem is gullible because I'm like, yes, that's what I want. You want to move women's boxing? I believed it and I signed. Now I'm stuck. Yeah, go ahead. Sorry, that was my son. <laughs> oh, that's okay. <laughs> yeah. So, so now I have no idea when I'm fighting. I have no idea who I'm fighting. Because now I have a promoter, Gary Lewis, who not only is upset with me, but wants to do things his way. So here I am without a fight and I'm not moving along because promoters have exclusive agreements only. Managers, I get exclusivity, but promoters shouldn't be allowed to have exclusive deals when you're putting on cards because it limits the fighter once they do have a belt. Yeah, a hundred percent. It makes no sense. Like what can boxing do to stop all of this from happening then? Is that, do you think there's a way that this can be stopped? Because like you say, it's going to affect like your career and, and if it happens to other people, it's affecting people's careers. 
Yeah, it really is. Because, you know, look at my position. I just started and I'm ready to walk away just because it gets so overwhelming. The kind of camps I put myself through, my body can't handle going through these training camps just to fight someone last minute or take on different opponents until I get a chance to fight better quality fighters. I wish that somehow we could have annual meetings or even um, once a quarter. There's four quarters in a year. That's not asking a lot to Zoom. Get on the phone, all the sanctioning bodies, have a representative, talk. All the belts, have a representative, talk. All the major promotions, talk. I think communication is missing. So everyone is just doing whatever they want. Cause like I said, exclusive deals, I don't have to have you, I'll do my own thing. And then the fighters are hurting. Yeah, you're completely right. And it, it becomes down to people being selfish as well, where they're just looking after themselves, their promotion or whatever it may be to just like better themselves, whether it be financially, when really the fighters are the most important people because without you, nothing works. Mm -hmm. And I really believe women's boxing would be so much more popular if we were able to showcase our talent against other fighters on our level, because mm -hmm. You can't just go against anyone once you're in point because it's not going to be exciting at all. People want to see excitement, and that's what I want to bring. I love to entertain, but I'm not just going to get in the ring with anyone. I'd rather just not fight. Yeah, because it's not worth you know the time of your camp and what you have to put yourself through physically, <laughs> emotionally. It's so many sacrifices, and at the end of the day, if it's not worth it, there's no point doing it. Most definitely. And I love what I do. I'm going to go against everyone. Like, give me your best. Give me all the world champions, whoever's up and coming. If you've been active, that's what makes it fun. Like, oh, OK, you think you could beat me? Let's go. It's about seeing who could beat you where you currently are. Not, mm -hmm. oh, they want to fight me. I need time to prepare more. Then don't be a world champion. Yeah. Yeah, and I think everyone's scared of losing that aren't they? They don't want to have a loss on the record. But you look at other sports, ever they, it's fine. Like if you're if the best are fighting the best and you lose, that's fine. You're you're putting yourself out there, you're fighting the best. And then they fight again and they have brilliant trilogies. And we just don't see it in boxing because people run and hide and they wait, like you say. And yeah, then by the time the fight comes Yeah, and by the time the fight comes around, no one cares anymore because we've been waiting five years for this fight and no one's in the peak anymore. Look at the 90s and early 2000s. We still had rematches going on. And boxing was really booming. You had some great fights going on. You had Friday night fights, Saturday night fights. Now you don't really see that anymore because everyone's trying to be so strategic and not their training camp, but their opponents. Yeah, and it is a shame. Um, if we took away like all of the politics and all like, which is all like the negative side of boxing really, <laughs> and you could just, you could just pick, you know, like your dream opponent. Like, who would you love to fight next if if there was no politics involved? Everyone who has a belt at one eighteen, just line them up. Um, I really want to go against Roman again, just because I didn't get to take her belt. So this time, I would like to go against her at one eighteen and be able to snatch one of those belts. Dina Dorslin, she decided that she could bang with us at 118. So that kind of sparked a fire in me like, excuse you? You think you're just yeah. going to come to 118 and dominate? It don't work that way. Like, come see me. I feel like at 118, if you don't fight me, then you didn't fight the real champ. Screw hardware. It's about who's the baddest. And I'm the baddest from 115 to 126. So that's my mindset now. Screw on dispute it. Come see me. Let's fight. And if you beat me, then you're a bad somebody. <laughs> yeah. And the Dina fight, I would love that fight. That would be such a good fight between the two of you. That would be so entertaining. Now, that fight excites me because that's a fight that I can't say that I would just go ahead and smash. That's one where I would really have to work. And it would be whose game plan and whose will gets the uh, gets the best of the other. So I like challenges like that because I'm not always going to be better than that person, but I'm going to have a better game plan for that night. Mm, yeah, and it's fights like that that are so entertaining. But it's what's important for women's boxing because it is so new, and you still got critics out there with women's boxing. When we're not seeing these 50-50 fights, 
because we don't it's not like in the men's game we don't always see 50 50 fights and it's fine in people's eyes as soon as you see like a lopsided woman's fight they're like oh well the skill level's rubbish so that's why it's so so important i think to just stop all these silly fights and just get big big fights on big cards and that's how it's going to help grow most definitely and it's happening now we're seeing women on these cards but we're not seeing the right kind of matchups like Sanisha's fight. That was an awesome fight that brought yeah. great exposure to women's boxing, even Sedano versus Bermudez. That was an entertaining fight as well. But now you're going to have fights like Katie Taylor versus Jennifer Hahn. That's not exciting. Now you have Amanda Sedano versus, um, um, the, who's the chick, from the other uh, way, Mercado. Yes. I don't think Mercado has enough dog in her to go against someone like Serrano. You also have Mitchell versus Courtney. That's going to be a pretty good fight because their um, talent matches each other. But once again, you're a world champion. You shouldn't really be fighting Mitchell right now. But what can I do? Yeah, I mean, that fight intrigued me because I actually think it is a straight, I mean, Jamie Mitchell should not have the opportunity to fight for the world title, like in principle, but it is an intriguing fight of the sense of they are evenly matched. I think everyone's going to presume Shannon's going to walk over and I'm not convinced. I, Jamie can punch and she's, you know, she's decent and she's on Shannon's level. So mm -hmm. I actually think it's quite an intriguing fight in that sense. But you can see why then, I remember when um, they were trying to announce an opponent for Shannon and I put out on Twitter, like, who would you like to see her in the ring with? And your name come up the most. I remember thinking there is absolutely no way Eddie Hare, Matt Droom, Shannon, none of them are going to agree to that fight. So you knew what type of opponent was coming for that fight. And I know Eddie knows who I am at this point. So sooner or later, they're going to have to address it when it comes to me. They can't just keep picking anyone. So if I have to wind up fighting, having another fight, that actually, no, I take that back. I'm not fighting unless it's for a belt. I have no interest. I'm not going to work my way up and pad my record and get my rankings up. I, I have a title. I should be fighting other world champions. So if it's not a world champion, I'll find other combat sports to fight in. And um, I was going to ask you about that because obviously you, you're like a master <laughs> of all trades. So with MMA, are you going to be going back to that? Is that something that would intrigue you? I am. I was taking a little break from it because once again, I wanted to focus on my boxing. But as you can see, even when I step away, I'm having a hard time staying busy. Right now, I'm preparing for a, a grappling tournament. It's a submission only tournament in Vegas just to keep me busy. While that's fun and I'm really excited, I want to be champion. I want hardware. I want to be fighting in boxing and MMA. That's where more of my focus is. I feel like all my grappling tournaments and Brazilian jiu-jitsu is for when I retire. But what else am I supposed to do when I need something to keep me motivated? Yes, yes, definitely. Is MMA similar where you're struggling to get fights or is the business style slightly different, which can make it a bit easier? The issue I'm having with MMA is that now I'm a world champion. To them, they don't understand the distinction in each belt. So they don't realize that I have one of the lower belts and not a lot of experience. So they combine my amateur and my pro. So they want me to fight all these top girls. I have no problem with doing that, but I need a full camp. I was given boxing dates that are no longer happening. So I didn't accept those fights because I was supposed to stay busy for the rest of the year in boxing. I can't be a last minute opponent in MMA because it is new for me and these girls do challenge me. So I need full camps. So now I'm in a position where I either need to focus on boxing or I need to focus on MMA because I can't do both at the same time. I could train in both at the same time, but I can't give both like my full attention. Yeah, yeah. And like you say, anytime that you're going for a fight, obviously your full attention has to be there. Of course, especially when you're wanting the big fights. Like you can't half ass it, can you? Especially in MMA, because anything can happen. In yeah. boxing, 
only my body and my head you're trying to aim for. In MMA, you could try to break my legs, my arms, grab my neck and choke me, take me down. And that's what's so great about it because I have to be so aware. But I like that type of fighting. So it's like, let's go. <laughs> but I really, really, I want to fight for another belt in boxing. So while I'm still looking to see what's in MMA, boxing remains my focus. Yeah. There's been a few, especially if you on the women's side of boxing that have crossed over to MMA. So obviously you've got yourself, Clarissa Shield recently done it, Serrano's done it, a few others. What's the reason behind crossing over? Is it a challenge in another sport or is it literally to keep active? For me, it's to keep active and because I like doing something new. And for a while, I didn't want to box anymore. So I was just training in MMA. I've been doing MMA since 2015 out of pure interest. You get a lot of these current world champions who are doing it just for the money. Look at when Ava Knight did it, when Heather Hardy did it. Look at Amanda Serrano. She has to go to a small promotion and fight girls with barely any experience who don't even know how to shoot in so that she can look good. Me, on the other hand, I'm going against legit, like actual mixed martial artists. I just went against a girl who has a Muay Thai background. So it was an evenly matched fight. They're doing it for the money. They're hoping that they can just fight average people and make a big paycheck. Why are you willing to do that in MMA, but not in boxing? Like, come on, what's mm. up? <laughs> yeah, that is so true. Yeah. Because I've always been interested by that because we do see more people crossing over. And I'm sure people do it for lots of different reasons, but I do think, I don't know if like, because of the money, like you say, and um, obviously keeping active in boxing, like your experience just seems to be super difficult, which is, which is so strange. Yeah. And I like to stay busy. So I actually have time to train in each discipline. You mm -hmm. know, I'm, and I got off the military and all I was doing was going to school, even going to school full time. I'm still, I still get bored. So I like to train all day. I <laughs> break from school just to train all day. So in one day I'm doing my kickboxing, I'm doing jujitsu, I'm doing my boxing, and then I'm doing some conditioning. So if I'm training six days a week, I'm not lacking in any area. Mm -hmm. Where do you get the energy from to just <laughs> to constantly <laughs> be training? <laughs> You know what? I think it comes from my background of being little and my mom kicking us out the house and saying, you're not going to stay here all day. Find something to do. So now <laughs> if I'm sitting around, I'm like, this doesn't feel right. <laughs> um, last question. Obviously, I know it's been difficult and you get in fights and stuff like that. What would be the ideal end to the year for you? Would, you, would it be getting out and fighting for a belt again or are you going to have some time off, do you think? No, what would be ideal is to at least be undisputed or to fight a world champion in another weight class who has one of the four um, major belts and to maybe get at least one more fight in MMA. And I, I that would make me happy because I was supposed to be fighting every other month. So now I got to tone it down and just be okay with getting one or two more fights. Mm -hmm. Well, I am going to keep all my fingers crossed for you that something comes up because you do deserve it I do hopefully it will hopefully you'll get a couple more fights and um, bring home more belts as well yeah most definitely I appreciate you having me on it's always a pleasure oh no thank you so much for your time and um, hopefully when you get a fight lined up you can come back on and you can tell me all about it <laughs> most definitely <laughs> Melissa thanks so much thanks for watching if you like this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to the channel ready for new content dropping all the time. Also, give Women's Fight News a follow on Twitter and on Instagram.